Welcome back, Chem 20s. This is part two of polarity. Um, what I want to do here is take a look at some examples of those type of compounds that are always polar and those types of compounds that are always nonpolar. On the left hand side of your screen, you will see that we have four types. Those do not have to be memorized. What I'm going to use these for is to pull each of those four examples onto the page, draw it for you, um, show you how come it is polar and how these individual bond dipoles actually can add together so we can see that there is some polarity. So I'm going to start with the first example. We've done this one already, HCl. Um, I want to add the bond dipoles, therefore I'm going to look up the electronegativity values. The difference for this is I'm not going to write them down. So you have your periodic table. You could certainly draw all four of these right now, pause the video, write down the electronegativity values, add in your dipole arrows or your momentary dipole arrows and make a decision on what where you think these arrows are going. So I'm going to do the first one. Again, we know hydrogen is 2.02. We know chloride or chlorine is 3.2, so it's larger. So we're going to come along. I'm going to draw my bond dipole. Need my pen first. I'm going to draw my bond dipole going here. So since it adds together, there's no cancellation. I know for sure HCl is a polar molecule. One side has a higher affinity for the negative electrons than the other. There's a net bond dipole, therefore, for sure it is polar. Okay, example number two, and we're gonna have to unfortunately keep doing this where we jump back and forth between the two. Um, I'm gonna look at NH3. First, I'm gonna look at it as a structural diagram so we can see how this works, but then I want us, as we get better at this, to really start thinking about these in three-dimensional shapes. So, I'm going to grab my pen. Again, I'm going to look up these values. Hydrogen is 2.2. Nitrogen is 3.0. So nitrogen wins. So when I look at this, nitrogen is going to win the dipole. Nitrogen over here is going to win the dipole. And if we look, one's pushing to the right, one's pushing to the left. They're pushing with the same amount of force because the number, the difference between hydrogen and nitrogen is exactly the same. So these guys are actually going to cancel themselves out. So the net dipole is actually going to be coming from here. And so if we added all these together, this guy would cancel this guy would cancel, and I would have a net dipole going straight up. Now, let's pause for a second and think about this as a three-dimensional shape. Remember, this is trigonal pyramidal, so they're all coming up at an angle. Think of it as you have three cars driving up a hill at three different roads all coming up. If they drive, 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 and they all drive at the same speed because they have the same electronegativity difference between hydrogen and nitrogen, if they all drive up the hill at the same speed and they hit at the top, are they going to stop dead or is their momentum going to carry up? Well, of course, their momentum is going to carry up. So. Again, bond dipole going here, bond dipole going here, bond dipole going here. None of these cancel. There will be a net bond dipole that is actually going up. Same as we would have saw when we were looking at this example over here. For 99% of the examples we do, a structural picture I like better because I can see things cancel out. But every so often, that asymmetrical geometry catches us. And so we always have to be thinking in the back of our mind, does the three-dimensional shape change anything in this example? Okay, let's do example number three, which would be H2O. So again, I'm going to get my little pointer tool here. And it's just one of those things we're dealing with tonight. Um, so I've got H2O. I look up the values. Hydrogen is 2.2. Oxygen is 3.4. So oxygen is pulling harder as we go up. And oxygen is pulling harder as we go up. Notice water is not linear. Therefore, again, think of this as like a 
street light and both these guys have stop signs if the cars don't pay attention and they both drive in the direction of oxygen and they miss their stop signs are they when they make contact going to stop or is their momentum going to carry them and again i would say that these bond dipoles don't cancel out i would say that they have an energy dipole that adds up together this bond dipole that goes in that direction therefore it hits the criteria unequal sharing this is again going to be polar now we have our last one to prove polarity and that is the example of chcl3 so i'm going to open it up again three-dimensional shape but it's really hard for us to imagine this especially because we don't have model kits at our houses so i'm going to do this with uh, my pen again and i'm going to draw on my bond dipoles and so hydrogen is 2.2 carbon is 2.6 so carbon wins carbon is of course 2.6 we just said chlorine is 3.2 so chlorine is going to win this time three times now when i look at this one is going up one is going down that to me means these guys are going to cancel out both of these guys are going to the right and to the right some more so i would say the bond dipole when we add them all together is going to the right now it's very 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 hard to see on a tetrahedral shape because again it's hard to see the angles because we're trying to envision this as three-dimensional but again, if we drew this in, hydrogen is going towards the carbon. Carbon is going towards all three chlorines. Again, these cars are pulling in three different spots. They're not gonna stop. This energy is going straight through here, through the middle of the chlorines, pretty much as they were the middle of the chlorines over here. These are four very different examples, if you look at the types on the side, but they all are polar molecules because when you add them together, they have a bond dipole. They don't cancel out. This is really important for us to understand that in a lot of cases, we, we can draw these and figure these out, in all honesty, quite easily. Now, we've been looking at polar molecules. What I would like us to do is let's look at nonpolar molecules. Now, nonpolar molecules, there's less examples. There's we only have two types over here on the side, and one of them is really, really easy. And I'm assuming you could probably think of what type this would be. And so if I take a look at this, CLCL. Chlorine has an electronegativity of 3.2, and another chlorine has an electronegativity of 3.2. Well, who's going to pull harder they're both the same this is like having two people pulling and they both pull with the same force this is not polar what this ends up being is nonpolar, and it's going to look like this an equal sharing of the bond this is what all the bonds in the model kit looks like and we said earlier the bonds in the model kit aren't always right they're right when it's a nonpolar example because it's equal sharing but they're not right every example that we've done that is a polar example now, let's do one more example. So I would like to look at HCl. We're gonna look at methane. Again, we're gonna look up the values. Hydrogen is 2.2, carbon is 2.6, so carbon is gonna win. So, carbon pulls to the right, carbon pulls to the left, well, we already know they're both a hydrogen carbon bond. One goes left, one goes right. These guys are going to cancel each other out. Carbon pulls down. Carbon pulls up. Again, one's going up, one's going down, pulling the same in a carbon hydrogen bond. They are going to cancel each other out. This guy is also a perfect example of nonpolar. Yes, they have polar 
dipoles, but when you add them up, they all cancel out. This is a very difficult example to see if you're thinking about it in a three-dimensional shape. I honestly, in the beginning, I prefer, I tell all my students, draw these as molecular compounds. Draw these as very, oh, sorry, draw these as very straightforward structural compounds. Don't worry about shapes unless the question tells you about shapes. But then again, you might want to go off onto the side of your paper or a scrap piece of paper and still draw them as basic structural diagrams so you can see these cancel off. About 5% out of all examples, you'll have to think about the shape. And, in, and I like to think about the shape anyways because we've already looked at Vesper. What I'm going to suggest is I'm going to give us two more examples. I would like you to pause the video, draw these with dipole dipoles, and then in a second, I'm going to reveal my answers. So pause the video now because I'm going to go and reveal my answers. So answer number one, answer number two. I've drawn in all the mini dipoles. You'll notice this time I drew it as the real shapes. I'm using Vesper shapes. Ideally, if we look in our first example on our left over here, we will see that these the hydrogens are all going towards the carbon. Carbon is going towards the oxygen. Hydrogen is going towards the oxygen. None of these cancel out. Ideally, we look like we have a, and I'm going to put it in here, bond dipole pretty well going in that direction. Because there's a bond dipole, we're going to call this polar. On the second example, or on, on our last example, we will see that between the oxygen and oxygen bond, there is no dipole. But between the oxygen and hydrogen, there is a dipole. One is going down to the right. One is going up to the left. These guys will actually cancel each other out. We would call this nonpolar molecule. Hope you understand the difference between polar and nonpolar. And remember, you can watch these videos at any time you'd like.